Oh, hey everybody, it's Chuck. Welcome back. I've got a little experiment I want to run today and it's in the Cybertruck and it's in spirit of the outstanding news of the new release of the Tesla Model Y Juniper or the refresh, the new Model Y. Uh, I think it's a great looking car. Um, it's, it's really exciting and, and congratulations to all of you that have been waiting for this car and purchased it. Uh, brand new AI4 uh, Model Y um, that's going to do great with FSD. But it's a little bit different than my AI4 Model Y in one distinct area. It's got a front bumper camera. Now, this front bumper camera is actually the identical camera location as the Cybertruck, believe it or not. The Cybertruck was the first vehicle to be released with a bumper camera. There was also one leaked in some images of the early Model 3 Highland, but they never came to fruition. But it does look like the board for the AI4, and there might even be a refreshed AI4 hardware that has this fascia camera or the front bumper camera uh, pinned out and possibly even available for upgrades. There's just no way to know on the AI4 without it if it can be retrofitted yet. But what I thought I would do, because the actual Tesla website talks about using this front bumper camera, the fascia camera, for full self-driving and also for parking. Uh, right out of the gate, it's obvious it is an important parking camera because it gives visibility um, both to the driver, if you're just looking at it manually, or possibly even FSD doing park and unpark, visibility into this blind spot that's very low into the ground in front of the hood of any of the vehicles, including the Cybertruck, Model 3, Model Y. There's a blind spot under there, especially when parked. You could argue that as a car approaches, you can kind of have memory and see what's in front of you. But if your car has been parked for any amount of time, uh, and say uh, a, a kid's bicycle was put in front of the car, the car has no memory uh, to, to keep that um, in there, that there might be something uh, there. So it's important to have visibility down there. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you a little bit about the Cybertruck so you can think about this front fascia camera. Uh, we can talk about it a little bit, and then I'm gonna get in the car and uh, the, the truck and show you uh, what we can see from the front, front fascia camera and, and what we have to do to see it. So uh, let me show you a little bit about the actual camera. Uh, I've got my um, camera here, so I'm gonna go down on the Cybertruck. And this is where the front bumper camera is. And the front bumper camera actually has a little washer there too. There's a little hole there that lets um, washer fluid from the reservoir of the washer come down and spray over this. This is the only camera on the entire vehicle that has a washer. And the new Model Y also has this washer. We've seen it. So this is the camera. But if you look at the camera lens, it's got a nice little lens on it. And it's as far forward on the car as you possibly can get um, on, on the Cybertruck. So that leads to the question is, is this Chuck's camera giving lateral visibility to FSD? This camera is currently not used in FSD and I validated that by putting tape over it and driving. I haven't done it yet on 13.25. I have done that test on 13.24. If I put painter's tape on that lens, FSD does just fine. Uh, might need a little bit more testing, but in general, it's not a required camera. But I also wanna show you a little bit about how I'm gonna do this test. Um, so this is how I always drive with my 360 camera. I put my 360 camera on top of the vehicle at the lateral position of the B-pillar camera right here. So whatever the B-pillar camera can see, that 360 camera theoretically has the same lateral view. So what that means is if I'm at the NHTSA stop at my unprotected left-hand turn, um, whatever that 360 camera is showing you is what is visible to that B-pillar. And then if you creep forward, you start to see that B-pillar uh, get its visibility left and right so that it can make its decision on the unprotected left turn. One of my biggest complaints is, is that's the only camera that can see left and right, and you have to physically move the vehicle out into or close to the, the moving traffic in order to get that necessary visibility. So what I wanna test today, and I'm gonna take you along with, is I wanna see what we can see out of that bumper camera um, and show you, because the new Model Y owners uh, that got this new bumper camera are probably interested if that camera has any utility for actually helping us uh, in uh, FSD decisions. All right, so stick with me, let's get in the truck, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about our setup inside the truck. All right, everybody, we're in the truck, uh, and I'm not quite pulling out the unprotected left-hand turn because I wanna talk to you a little bit about uh, how the cameras and the camera view works here and some of the capabilities. So 
uh, I'm, I'm right here just to the left of the unprotected left-hand turn. So, you know, those of you that wonder, this is the unprotected left-hand turn. And believe it or not, if you didn't know it, you can um, type in Chuck's Corner uh, on your uh, FSD, and it actually has this as a point of interest. Uh, Chuck's Corner. So any of you driving through Jacksonville, you want to find it, come on down and uh, try the unprotected left-hand turn for yourself. Um, but... We have this camera button down here, and those of you that know about that, this is the camera button, and this is the front bumper camera, and if we slide up, this is the rear camera, and these are the repeater cameras. This is all we have visibility to with the camera button. So you can see we're looking here uh, down low and left, uh, and right and forward from a very low position. And remember I showed you that the, uh, the windshield, um, I'm sorry, the camera lens has a washer. If you see this little uh, washer icon down here in the lower left, if you just press that, Boom, it throws a little bit of washer fluid down on the camera. And now uh, I may have ruined my experiment. I need to go out there and dry it off just a little bit to uh, get, get the actual water. But in a wind stream, that will dry off just fine. So that is the front uh, bumper camera view. Now, I do want to show you, we have another feature, uh, but it's only available when the vehicle is in park. So if you notice, I'm in drive right now. If I go to service uh, in the menu, there is a button down here called camera preview. And the camera preview is grayed out when you're in drive. If I go to park, the long press there, my camera preview is available. So I can touch this camera preview button and I get another, it feels like another application is opening. Hey, he got me there from the cabin camera. Uh, and then you got all of the cameras. You got the main front uh, looking out the front. You got the wide angle out the front. Uh, and I want you to notice this crop angle. The wide angle is not a true 180 camera. Can you see that? It is not looking 180 degrees and left. Here's the door pillar. Now we don't have access to the door pillar cameras um, uh, in the normal mode. These are the ones that you can now see. This is the 90 degree view. Um, I'm sorry, this was the fender and then there's the right door pillar, the right fender. There's the tailgate camera, which we have access to. But notice that the camera preview See how you can see the outline of this lens here? It's like this camera preview is showing you everything the camera can see. And then now let's go to this fascia camera. Look at this fascia camera's view. See, this is inside the camera lens, even including the housing. So the normal view that we had, um, you know, from the, uh, the, the camera preview you had in drive mode is that cropped portion of this. But just knowing that the vehicle has more visibility into that, means it can see further left and right. So let's just take this front fascia camera as an example. Do you see this far right edge has visibility in this speed bump sign over to the right here? And way over to the left, you can see, we can see a little bit of this uh, curb and grassy area. Okay, that's a little bit, that's, it's a really wide view. But now let me take you to the front camera here. Look at this. You can't see that bumper camera, that uh, speed bump sign over here to the right. And you just can barely see the first little bit of edge of curb there on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna take you back to that service menu and keep that curb in mind on the left-hand side. If I go back to service and I go to camera preview, and look, look how much of the curb we can see. Okay, so what I'm gonna do in this experiment, um, and, and I wanna show you one more thing. On the bumper camera, remember here in the rear view, Look at this cropped view out of the tailgate. We got this big pine tree is just in view and see this shrub over here is just in view. Let's go back to the tailgate camera and uh, in the camera preview and let's look at the rear view. Look, that pine tree, we got shrubs and pine trees over here and you can't quite see it, but that's the shrub right there that was just at the edge. So all of this is actually available to the computer even though in our preview here, it's cropped. So an important thing to notice uh, that the car has more visibility than we can see here. So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna go out uh, to the intersection. I'm gonna do the NHTSA stop. I'm not gonna have FSD engaged, but I'm gonna stop at the stop line and I'm gonna try to show you the views we see out of the camera and then what um, the uh, fascia camera can see looking left and right. Now remember, I've got my B pillar on top of the car that has given you a nice 360 degree view um, from the B pillar location. 
Um, and if I have time in the camera preview, I'll, I'll poke open in the camera preview, the left and right uh, B-pillar camera previews also, just to give us a little bit more insight as to what the Cybertruck and also these new Model Ys will be able to see with this front fascia camera. Now, I might get run off by a few neighbors coming up and trying to get out onto the highway. Um, and because I'm gonna need to be in park to do this, I might get interrupted a little bit. And if the video gets cut and clipped, it's probably because of that, but I'll, I'll try to talk you through it. So let's go ahead and um, head out. And I'm just gonna leave this up on the fascia camera right there. And we'll pull this uh, front preview up here. And then after this uh, vehicle or neighbor pulls around, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take you out there. Okay, let me just kind of look left and right to see. Okay, it looks like we're clear. Nobody's coming. Okay, so as I pull up to the NHTSA stop, at the stop line, I'm right there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put it into park just to see if I can do this quickly. So this is what the front bumper camera can see out of the front. There's the left and right and the tail. But if I come back over to service mode, and go to camera preview. It's gonna come back up, it's reloading the app because I'm like, hey, there I am again. Uh, let's go all the way to the front fascia camera. So the fence is still blocking the view here at the NHTSA stop location. So I can't see the oncoming traffic and the B pillar camera, um, and, and I'll even show you the left door pillar camera is this one right here. That's all that the B pillar can see. So it has to creep to do this maneuver. Uh, which is what we've been talking about for years. Now, I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, sneak up here. I don't have any neighbors coming. And I'm going to go out to where the car normally creeps, which is right about here. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and put it in park again. And let's go ahead and show the front camera. So there's the front uh, bumper camera. And you can see it's cropped off in a, into a position that would not help us make a decision. Probably out of the B-pillar camera I'm showing you on the wide angle view, you'll be able to see a little bit more. But let's go to service and let's go to camera preview. See if I can get away with this in one cut. Hello. And let's go out the left door pillar. So there's what the B-pillar can see. And I am not creeped out all the way. And do you see how those cars are still coming there? I would need to creep out a little bit further to make a high speed decision. It's just not enough. But let's go see what the fascia camera can see. So it is a full wide angle lens and I can see all the way down the road, but I would not say I can see clearly, right? So, but could those pixels moving in that image using the full 180 degree view of this um, lens be enough to help the car make a decision? That's what I wanna show you. This front bumper camera has a 180 degree view, even though the edges are a little bit blurry. Um, and here's the cars coming by, you know, rather quick. And I'm still, if I lean forward in the vehicle, I can see further down the road, but the car would need a little bit more of a creep in order to make a decision. So let me go ahead and go all the way out to the creep location where the vehicle would normally be able to see. And it's right about there is where the car normally stops. I'm gonna go ahead and hit park here. Let me go to the camera and look, there's the front bumper camera. It's cropped, it still can't see enough because of the crop view. But let's go to service and camera preview. And let me show you what we can see from the left pillar now. There's the left door pillar. So this is why the creep works. It's because when I'm creeped all the way out here, the B pillar is in front of the fence. But my front bumper is almost in the lane of traffic. It's not quite there, but it's pretty far out. But let's go look at the fascia camera now. See what I mean? I'm almost to the road edge, but I still got a nice 180 degree view and I can see pixels moving. So if this bag of uh, photons, their bag of dots or points of dots, you know, I just completely uh, destroyed that point of light, you know, can, can be processed and the AI can see if something is moving, then this front fascia camera could be the forward facing camera I've been looking for. Now, granted, I would rather have a headlight camera that is as clear as this looking left. And that's not what we got. We got a B pillar camera and a front fascia camera with 180 degree view that possibly is what we're doing to keep the car from creeping out too far with traffic oncoming. And even if this front fascia camera is used to creep safer, 
In other words, don't creep all the way out when you see a lot of cars coming or something like that. I think it could be very, very useful. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you. If you hadn't found this in the camera settings, go play with it, you know, be safe, you know, do it in a situation where you can park and nobody's gonna uh, run over you. But, you know, this is probably what Tesla's answer is for full self-driving unsupervised, having more camera visibility. And those of you that have been following me for years know this has been one of my biggest issues and I'm really, really hopeful that the team can make use of this camera uh, in an effective way to give us unsupervised full self-driving. But we'll see. What do you guys think below? Uh, leave me some comments. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and get under drive here and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a great day.